Hello, everyone. In 2014, the American Advertising Federation initiated an award in honor of a true advertising legend. The David Bell Award recognizes extraordinary and unique contributions and service to the advertising community and industry as a whole. This year, it is our privilege to bestow this award on the president, CEO, and chief creative officer of the agency that bears her name, Carol H. Williams. So the only thing more humbling than having your name on an award is giving it to someone like Carol H. Williams. It's kind of like watching your kids eclipse you. Carol's perspective and vision can be summed up nicely in a question she likes to ask. Whose eyes are you looking at when you view the world? When you see this simple, thought-provoking question, she engages clients and develops a rich understanding of their brand's role in the lives of consumers. The question also provides a frame that illuminates Carol's contributions and commitment to our industry, African-American consumers and her community. For over 40 years, Carol has used this perspective to make a powerful, positive, and lasting mark on our industry and the world. She began her career in 1969 as a copywriter in Leo Burnett's creative department, where she developed iconic lines and images for well-known brands. Remember, say hello to poppin' fresh dough? How about strong enough for a man, but made for a woman? That was copywriter Carol Williams. She performed so well in such a short period of time, she became the first female and the first African-American vice president and creative director at Burnett. In 1986, she started her own firm where her strategic touch is evident in marketing campaigns for Allstate, General Motors, Walt Disney, Procter & Gamble, and many more. Her insight, approach, and persistence earned her agency invitations to work with a number of Fortune 500 firms, including Nissan, General Mills, Hewlett Packard, and the U.S. Army. With her direction, her agency helped identify new ways for clients to connect to the African-American consumer and urban markets while reinforcing the economic and social value of that consumer base. Over time, she grew her agency into one of the largest female and minority-owned businesses in the media and communications sector. Now, Carol has always been driven by the desire to make the world a better place. She dedicates time to the empowerment of women, the needs of the African-American community, and the talent of the future all across the United States. We would be here for hours if I were to start naming her many philanthropic endeavors. So I'll just mention a few. Carol actively supports many organizations with her time and generosity. The Rainbow Push Coalition, the Congressional Black Caucus, the NAACP, the Dream Academy, the National Newspaper Publishers Association, the Museum of the African Diaspora, and the AIDS Project of the East Bay are just a few organizations that benefit from her commitment. 
She also serves as the president of the board of directors for the Marcus Graham Project, which is a nonprofit organization dedicated to building and developing the next generation of diverse advertising and marketing professionals. In my work with Carol, I have personally, personally witnessed her strong commitment to philanthropy, her passion for public service, her advocacy for marginalized communities. Several years ago, Carol employed her marketing skills to my own congressional district in Oakland, California, where her work on the Visit Oakland campaign rebranded the city to reflect our vibrant and cultural and economic landscape. Carol deserves immense credit and recognition for the entrepreneurial hub that Oakland and the East Bay is today. If a picture is worth a thousand words, you're about to see a million. And that's still not enough to capture the essence of Carol H. Williams and her story. Thank you to the American Advertising Federation for this tremendous and even otherworldly honor. Thank you, David Bell. I am more than honored to have this special recognition. You have crossed so many waters and knocked down so many barriers in service of this industry. To receive this award is truly humbling. Congresswoman Barbara Lee, thank you for your presence. In this environment, I know that it is a heavy lift. And as always, you have been a brilliant and great friend. And I'm more than happy to have you again at my side and always looking out for my back. Thank you. And Mr. Robert De Niro, Smokestack Lightning was for you. <laughs> Thank you, Renetta McCann and Carol Wyatt, who put me up for this award, chased me around and prevented me from running off and hiding from this momentous occasion. Also to my mentors, my family, my supporters, all the loved ones that I still that are still here and who have gone, who have supported me in my vision, which admittedly has evolved over the years, but has always evolved around creativity. When I found out that I had been inducted, I found myself reliving a ton of memories that I believe dictated my career, my path. I thought back to a younger Carol. I was in my early 20s, working for the world-renowned Leo Burnett, advertising. <laughs> Yet, it's amazing. This is a 69 Burnett hired me. They had no reason to do so. There was no diversity program or great effort, but they did. And I had a brilliant career there. I, I remember I had just written a commercial for Hungry Jack Biscuits. Remember Hungry Jack Biscuits? <laughs> it was about an uncle, a man named Uncle Henry. We all know him. You know the one, the one your daddy used to go hide when he'd show up and scowl over everything, but everybody in the family loved him anyway, despite the fact that he didn't have a job and he would eat up all the food in the pots, stick his head in the pots, and eat up all the food in the refrigerator. Well, I wrote this about this character. Uh, and in the commercial, Uncle Henry comes over to the house, and the kids are singing, Uncle Henry, Uncle Henry. And Mom is in the kitchen. She starts baking some more, because Henry was in the house, and the dad was sitting over there. And um, anyway. I love the commercial, and so did my creative review committee. We sent it to the client, and the client rejected it on the basis that it made the product seem a little like a specialty, and that wasn't what the brand was looking for. Uncle Henry made the product seem like a specialty. That was interesting. I was devastated. 
I remember getting on the elevator at the Prudential Building in Chicago alone, feeling the insecurities and the doubts sleep, seeping in. I was quickly convincing myself that I was a failure, uncreative and not cut out for this job. And so, just at about the lowest point, there was a ding, and the elevator door stopped, the elevator stopped on the seventh floor, and the door opened. And who stood there coming in but the acclaimed Leo Burnett, looking like the Pillsbury Doughboy in a suit. <laughs> Sucking on a black cigar in his mouth. Back in those days, you could smoke anywhere, you know. <laughs> My back slammed up against the wall, trying to disappear and give as much space uh, as possible to the Leo Burnett, the marketing genius. And he looked at me and he said, hello, Carol. And my knees buckled. How could Leo Burnett know me? I was just 20 years old. I was a nobody, just some skinny little black kid from the south side of Chicago with a rejected Pillsbury Hungry Jack commercial. <laughs> I just stared at him. And he waited another moment, and then he asked, how's it going today? Even more surprising in that moment was that I entered a zone of like confession to a God, <laughs> begging for forgiveness and give me another chance. I told him, my Hungry Jack commercial just got rejected and I can't think of anything else to write. And he looked at me and smiled and said, anybody that can write Uncle Henry can write anything they want. <laughs> A moment before, I was this dejected, failed writer. But now, I was a creative. Leo Burnett had resuscitated me. He knew my name. He knew my work. And most importantly, he believed in me. In that moment, Leo Burnett made my career. He fueled me and set me on a path that leads to where I am today, in front of you all, being inducted into the Hall of Fame. <laughs> if I impart anything to you today, is that they are all about you. They really are. All you have to do is look and you will see them. Young creators struggling with self-doubt and worrying this self half to death over if they'll ever be good enough, if they'll ever be acknowledged. I implore you all to take a moment to learn their names and give them hope, give them inspiration, Give them an environment to be their best selves, and you will see the magic that once made this industry great. And I absolutely mean once made this industry great, because we came out of a great era where brilliant creative was born, influenced America on how to dress, bake love in a kitchen, spend quality time in your family, and party in innocence. <laughs> creatives, great creatives will make great brands for you and thus restore this industry to one great creative platform that gives rise to the brilliance of advertising. 
Thank you.